Many times they say, oh, we want to make the church become relevant to the 21st century. And in the name of trying to make the church relevant to the 21st century, <laughs> the church loses its relevance with God. In some cycle, holiness is becoming old-fashioned. In some cycle, giving is becoming old-fashioned. Why we don't necessarily just sing the song, give me that old-time religion is good enough for me. There's nothing old-time religion because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and what? forevermore. Now, the one person of the Trinity that's on the earth today that will keep us relevant in the plan of God is the Holy Spirit. There's nothing like a vacuum. Every space must be filled. It all depends with what. And if we fill the space with the wrong stuff, we will do the wrong thing. That's why I believe in my heart that the role the Holy Spirit will play in our prayer life cannot be overemphasized. Jesus left the earth and he said to the people, it's to your advantage I go away. And they were filled with sorrow. You will under, you understand why they were filled with sorrow because they couldn't comprehend that you are being with us in and out. When we are in trouble, we come to you. When we need bread, you brought bread. When we need fish, you brought fish. Now you said, it's to your advantage that I go away. But they didn't understand what was saying. What he was simply saying was the fact that there's a limit so how much of me you can experience while I'm physically with you? Why? 
because the Holy Spirit was indwelling him and was walking through him. But when he left, the Holy Spirit now can dwell in all believers across the nation. Say the same Holy Spirit that was on the Lord Jesus Christ and walking through the Lord Jesus Christ now is resident in the life of every believer. That's powerful. That's powerful. That in every believer, the same Holy Spirit that came on Jesus, that raised Jesus from the dead, now works in each of us. The challenge many times is this. Not every believer fully knows him. And because they don't know him, they don't make him known. And when we don't make him known, other things are made known. But not again. Only him shall be made known. Amen. In the name of our Lord Jesus. So what I'll be sharing this morning within the few minutes of God in preparing us for this uh, quarterly prayer and fasting is uh, what I've titled here, uh, The Holy Spirit and Your Prayer. Say with me, The Holy Spirit and Your Prayer. Amen. In my few years of being saved, I've come to understand that much is accomplished when we do things with the Holy Spirit. And nothing is accomplished when we do things without him. No wonder Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. But it's a good news to know that with him, we can do all things. Say, with him, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Open your Bible with me to James chapter 5. Let's glean from God's word and then we will take some time to pray as we prepare to fast and pray this week. James chapter 5 from verse 13 to verse 18. Hallelujah. Amen. Read everybody. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the, and the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Verse 16. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly, and it should not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. That's 18. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. When you read the uh, scriptures like these, and you see that all the emphasis that I believe that God wants us to, to take note of is on prayer. Prayer. Now, a lot of things are done today in the church. But I mean the church, I'm talking about the body of Christ. But sometimes we don't do more of prayer. And ladies and gentlemen, when we stop praying, we become a prey. May we not become a prey. Amen. The devil will not stop the church, the body of Christ, and doing many things. Because some, some, in some places, the church is nothing but just a social club now. And we must, while I'm not a uh, joy killer or somebody who is, who is not against uh, uh, people feeling good, the, the feel-good factor. But we cannot, <laughs> in the name of feel-good factor, we lose sight of the vital place of prayer. And ladies and gentlemen, both young and old, it will take prayer, not only to work successfully as a Christian, but to be able to stand against the strategies of the devil in this last day. Satanic strategies is being fine-tuned. <laughs> very, very fine-tuned. And society is so fine-tuned that 
You will still feel you are a Christian, but you've lost touch with God. And that's a dangerous place to be. And that's why I believe that from time to time, God will call his people to a place of prayer and a place of fasting. Say prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. For, some, so for some, it's old-fashioned to fast and to pray. I don't know where all these lies of the devil is coming from. Many of the things that have helped a lot of us to grow and to maintain our work with God today. In the, I'm talking about years past, which we also learn from those who handed it over to us. is being made to look old-fashioned. In some cycle, holiness is becoming old-fashioned. In some cycle, giving is becoming old-fashioned. Somebody rose from no place one time again to attack. It's old-fashioned to give offering. It's old-fashioned to give tithe. But it's not old-fashioned to pay taxes. It's old-fashioned to pray or to fast when there's fast food. <laughs> Why we don't necessarily just sing the song, give me that old-time religion is good enough for me. There's nothing old-time religion because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and what? Forevermore. Now, the one person of the Trinity that's on the earth today that will keep us relevant in the plan of God is the Holy Spirit. Many times they say, oh, we want to make the church become relevant to the 21st century. And in the name of trying to make the church relevant to the 21st century, <laughs> the church loses its relevance with God. There's nothing like 21st century or 1st century. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And it to take our communion with the person of the Holy Spirit in the place of prayer, in the place of fasting, coupled with the revelation of the Word of God. There's nothing like a vacuum. Every space must be filled. It all depends what, with what. And if we fill the space with the wrong stuff, we will do the wrong thing. And that's why I believe in my heart that the role the Holy Spirit will play in our prayer life cannot be overemphasized. It says there, is anyone among you suffering? Let him what? Pray. Which means that God identifies with all that sometimes we go through suffering. But what you do when you suffer is what will make the difference. Sometimes when people go through suffering, because this is another thing, another lies of the devil. For many, when they gave their heart to the Lord and they were made to, they were told, oh, once you give your life to Christ, oh, there's no more problem, there's no more suffering, there's no more. That's a lie. Because what did they call those churches? Yeah, seeker-sensitive churches. Don't let them feel there's going to be any trouble. It's going to be fine. It's, it's going to be chocolate and biscuits every time. Really? And suddenly they face suffering, and they're upset with God, upset with the pastor, upset with the church, and say, if Christianity is like this, then I better just go on and live my life the same way I've been living it. And they fall back. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Do we really pray again? No, we complain. And when we don't complain, we discuss our sufferings. And while we discuss our sufferings, by texting, by WhatsApp, by tweeting. Can you imagine tweeting your suffering? <laughs> and everybody come to know about your suffering. Then they rub it in. And your suffering goes with suffering to square roots. The suffering now square rooted. And then before you know it, it becomes a mess. What a place to be. When I'm going through suffering, I can pray. Because I know the word of God makes me know that it shall come to pass in that day. 
His burden will be removed. His yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. And how many of you know the Spirit of the Lord is the one that anoints you to be able to break the yoke of suffering? Jesus went through suffering. And while he was suffering, he was still praying. It was suffering. In the Garden of Gethsemane, praying and praying and you are praying and you are sweating. I'm sweating just, just water. Oh. He was sweating blood. Oh my God. What was he sweating? Blood. And while he was sweating blood and praying, what were the disciples doing? Sleeping. And he came and woke them up. Can't you, Peter, Matthew, Mark, can't you wait with me for how long? For one hour. They couldn't. That's why he said, it's going to be to your advantage that I go away. For if I don't go away, the comforter will not come. And you will understand in the meaning what the meaning of that word comfort is. Or the helper. Is anyone among you suffering? Verse 13. Let him what? Pray. Then he also said, is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Let him what? Which means that in the midst of great things happening around you, is the time to sing psalms. Is the time to sing of God's praises. But today that's not the case. When we are cheerful, we top it up with some good wine. Oh, Bishop, don't go there. When we are cheerful, we want to, we want to marry. Nothing good, nothing wrong in marrying. What is saying that in the midst of your cheerfulness, build a hedge around your cheerfulness. Build a hedge of praise. Build a hedge of worship around it. Because the devil is never happy to see you cheerful. But you must constantly build an hedge. Constantly build an hedge. But what happens is this. When we are cheerful, we break the hedge. We become careless. No. After every major victory in your life, it's not a time to relax. It's a time to also take the bar up. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Then he went on to say again, Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them war. Let them war. Pray. I'm just trying to show you all the emphasis on prayer. But then you happen, what happens is this. When many are sick, they disconnect from the body. No, that's not time to disconnect. Because the subtle trick of the enemy is to disconnect people, to isolate. A sick man should not be isolated. When you are sick, it's not a time to work. Be isolated. It's a time to remain connected. To, be, to remain insulated. Say insulated. insulated. Not isolated. And in that time, he said, let them pray. I like that. Say, let them pray. He didn't just say, let him. Let them. Them is plural. Let them pray. So a believer is sick then. I don't want nobody to know I'm sick. I don't want to know. I don't want anybody to know my business. That's not scripture. Oh, if everybody knows that I'm sick, then everybody is going to know. It all depends on who you stay connected with. Because when you look at the, the makeup of our human body, every part of our body has the other part is connected to them. My thumb is close to this one. So if this one is scratching, guess who helps it? This one. What I'm saying is that within the body, there will be those that God has strategically placed close to you. So you maintain it. This is part of my body. But at the same time, I also have my kidney. If my kidney is hurting, this one can't reach it. But what I'm saying is that every part of the body has another part that is close to it. What does I say? May you identify the part that is close to you. Amen. And maintain that closeness. 
Because then, you don't want a part that is not part of you to be close to you. What does that say? Because when you have a part that is not part of you and it's close to you, it becomes a parasite and it becomes cancerous. I pray during this week, may the Lord raise you up. God will raise your head up. God will raise your finance up. God will raise your family up. You will not go down. Say amen, somebody. He now went on, he said in verse 16, then confess your trespass to one another and pray for one another. Confess your trespass or faults to one another. Sometimes things go wrong in our life. And then we go to God in prayer and we confess it. God will often also say to all, confess it with you and the person next to you. Confess it to the person close to you. Just as I said to you, you must identify who is close to you. That you may be healed. Say confession, confession. And, prayer. and prayer. We also bring in healing. Bring now, listen, look at it now. We don't talk about confession again. Well, I prayed about it and that's it. Really? Say so confess it. Because in your confession, you will make a possession, a repossession. So in my confession, I can repossess what I lost. Man, many things got lost in a time of failure. But those things that are lost can be repossessed in the place of confession. That's why the Bible says, He who cover it in sin will not prosper. Is that not? But he will confess and forsake it. God will bless such a person. I'm sharing with you what we don't talk about again commonly in the church today. And it's very sad in the midst of all that's happened, people then go for the motivation speaking. Then they get motivated in the service, but then they go home and still back to zero because nothing will keep you motivated than the word of God. Say forever, O oh Lord. Oh Lord. Your word is settled. Word. During this week of prayer and fasting, the Lord will show you areas you heard and some things that you need to take responsibility for. Because unless we take responsibility for what went wrong in our lives, we will just be going around the circle. Say confession and prayer. That you may be healed. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails more. Say with me, the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. In the Amplified, that same verse 16 says, now everybody read on, go on. Uh-huh. No, hold on there. See how it breaks it down. But you know what we do today nowadays in the church? We just uh, not just cover it, or we. I'm trying to the other word we normally use. Huh? Fine tune. Oh, okay, slip it under the carpet, or just brush it aside more. Gloss over it. Thank you. Just gloss over it. But then the gloss will, we, we go off again. And once the gloss, what happened? It shows up. I'm telling you, you will experience true liberty this week. Yeah. And it will happen so supernaturally, naturally. Yeah. Because many of us are carrying unnecessary burden. But what a privilege to carry, to carry, to what? To you know, everything. Everything. Your faults, your failures, your success. He said, bring it to him. And once you know how to bring it to him, nobody can raise it with you. Because a man who knows how to kneel before God will stand before man. I declare in this season of your life, you will come to a place you will be able to stand. Because you have knelt before the Lord in the name of the Lord Jesus. 
look, read on that scripture, and then pray also. Say, and then what? And pray also. Which means that don't pray unless you confess. For one another, that you may be what? And what? Look at it. You will be what? Healed and restored. And when you are healed and restored, it's as if you never sinned. It's as if you never heard. Restored. Restored to what? A spiritual tone of mind and heart. Say a spiritual tone of what? I mean, uh, ladies are very particular about the, the tone of their skin. You tone it up. Talk to me, somebody. Hello. You tone it up. And his thing is looking, pam, 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 boom. <laughs> it's good to tone the skin. How about toning the mind? I pray in Jesus' name, as your skin is toned, so will your mind be toned. Amen. Spiritual tone. I'm sure many of you never heard that. Spiritual tone of what? The mind. Spiritual tone of the mind and the heart. So lift your hands up. Say in the name of Jesus. As I, as I wait upon the Lord in prayer and fasting this week, I receive a spiritual tone of my mind and of my heart in the name of the Lord Jesus. You know, I went on to say what? The honest, heartfelt, Go on. The honest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes. Oh, someone shout hallelujah. hallelujah. It's going to make tremendous power available. And that tremendous power that is made available is because of your connection with the person of the Holy Spirit. A powerful man of God. It's not someone that just gyrates. A powerful man of God is a man that knows the Holy Spirit and is full of God's presence. Say the person of the Holy Spirit and the presence of the Holy Spirit. That's powerful. God will make you in this last day a powerful woman and a man of God. In all our institutions... Public service, there's a breakdown. There's so many breakdowns, but the only way out will be men and women who know their God and who will be able to not only take their place, but as a matter of fact, they will call upon you to come and take your place. Because there is not only a breakdown, but there is a cry in the heart of the people and says, Who will help us? But the Bible makes us to know we can come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that you are coming into this new communion and this empowered communion with the person of the Holy Spirit that answers and heavens will be opened over your life. Let's, let's finish on this verse because I can't even dwell on the other things. Um, James chapter 5. Thank you. Go on, everybody. Elijah was a man like nature, like ours. Uh huh. He said Elijah was a man like like passion, like us. He was just an ordinary man like us, but full of God. But even as he, even though he was full of God, he also was scared at times. Was he not? Did he run from Jezebel? Anyone who ever run from some troubles? Hand and two hands and two legs. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit will just empower you and say, No, you don't run from them. Face them. Amen. Say, face them. Amen. But may you face them with the face of God. Amen. I'm telling you, you can face them with what? The face of God. And when you come into God's presence, <laughs> He put His face on you. Sometimes ago, the Holy Spirit taught me to pray that prayer. He said, ask that the face of Christ will be placed upon your face. So when you stand, it's not just you that is seen what Jesus is seen. 
Many times we try to showcase ourselves. But I pray in this season of your life, may you come to a place that everywhere you go, they see the face of Christ on your face. Thank you so much for joining me in today's broadcast. I truly believe that you've been encouraged, you've been inspired, and you've been challenged. All the comments that have been coming uh, back has been very encouraging to me personally. Thank you for those ticks and likes on the social media. Uh, it goes a long way in encouraging us to keep on doing what God has called us to do. Now, for the benefit of those who have not made the most important decision of their life with regards to answering this one question, what will happen when I die? I want to encourage you this day to give your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And it's very simple. A. Acknowledge that you're a sinner. B. Believe that Jesus died for your sin. And C. Confess him as your Lord and Savior. Ephesians 2 from verse 8 to 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It says, It's not of works, lest any man should boast. It is the gift of God. You can do the same thing I did as a 12-year-old boy many years ago when I gave my life to Christ. And all I had to do was do exactly what the Word of God says in Romans chapter 10 from verse 9 to 10. That if thou wilt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and you believe in your heart, that Jesus Christ died for your sin, he says you will be saved. For with the mouth a confession is made unto salvation, and with the heart one believes unto righteousness. Now say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I acknowledge I am a sinner. Save me. So I confess you with my mouth, that you are my Lord, and you are my Savior. I believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sin. He was buried. But on the third day, God raised him from the dead. Therefore, I am saved. You know, as simple as this prayer may sound, if you prayed it from your heart, God heard you and you are saved. So I congratulate you for becoming a born again Christian from today. I'll be more than happy to encourage you in this work if you email me or send me a message and I'll be able to get back to you. And the next time when I come back through the social media, you keep on winning because God is on your side and you are destined to win. God bless you. Dear friend, I'm so thrilled to know that you've been blessed by all the materials I've been sharing on the social media platform. Why don't you take a step further by going to our YouTube channel to subscribe and also press the notification button so that you'll be among the first to be notified of all the other great messages and great materials that will be a blessing to you. Thank you for being part of the story. God bless you.